Hi guys, so this video is to show you to use the ADS to do the impedance matching. Okay, so this one is like the ZS and the Z load. Okay, so convert to the lump element, you will replace with the conductor capacitor. Okay, just like this. Okay, how are we going to get the value of the capacitor and the inductor? Okay, and then how are we going to know that uh, our capacitor should be in series or shun? In which direction is in this direction or this direction okay so something like this okay next okay from this side you can see like how they how they transform the z load impedance matching here to become the component the inductor and the capacitor value okay so this is the formula they use okay later i will show like why we use this formula and which formula we should use okay so you can see from here that the z load here okay the RL is 50 and then without the imaginary part, okay, so this one is the RS, so it's in here. So this one is like 54 RS and then this one XS, the imaginary part, 3.144, okay. So from here, we can know that the B is subsistent, okay, and the X is in reactance, okay. So when you know the subsistent, they will be in shunt and then it's reactant, they will be in series. Okay, so next we will show some basic of this. So you can see from here, right, the Z load, right? So your Z is here. So when we want to find, we want to find a direction for the value here. We will we will assume this one is a Z load and then this one is a Z S. So for this case, it's just like reactance. So we can just uh plus it up these two value to become is because it's a series. So we can plus it up and then Z S is equal to Z L plus J X. Next. So you can see from here it's like using emittance because it's a shunt radio here. So it's a subsistent here. So you can see like shunt radio, so it's like parallel. So you can use like ZL. Okay, so you be, you will become like YL. You will divide with 1 over ZL. So you become YL and then plus with the subsistent. So next, so from here you can see like, okay, let's say it's a dual lump element. So you have two uh, reactants and subs subsistent. Okay, so from here, so you can see like here is like a series, so you will plus it up, so you will get this. Then you will plus it up, and then after that you will do the pairer. So when you want to change your ZL to YL, right? So you will have like 1 over your ZL, so you will get uh, 1 over here, and then plus with JB. So it's something similar as here. So your after you series it, okay, you have a ZL, so 1 over with your RL and JXL, okay? Then you will plus with your JB here. So similar as here. So you will series, you will plus it up. Okay, both of this. And then after that, one over the ZL. So you get your y, YL. Okay, and then plus it up with the JB. Okay, so once you have this, right? So how are we going to know that we're using like the SL or SS? So you can see here is a XS and then here is a SL. Okay, the condition is when your RS, okay, is larger than RL. Okay, that means your in here is larger than your RL here. Okay, your RS is larger than your RL. Then you will use SL, the formula. Okay, for this side, when you're going to use the plus or minus, uh, both is fine. You will get a reactance value. They will either effect, they will effect on your X value. When they effect on your S value, it will effect you to use like capacitor in another. Okay, so this one I will explain later. So the B is like this formula. Okay. And then, so we know that RS larger than RL, we will use the circuit or something like this. Okay, so we have a subsistence here and the reactance here. Okay, next. So if your RL is larger than your RS, okay, if your R, RL here is larger than your RS, so you will use SS value uh, formula. And then plus minus is fine. They will effect on your re reactance here. Either use uh, inductor or capacitor. Why I say like this is like from this side, you can see from here. If your x is larger than zero, so you will use inductance. Okay, then this is the formula. If your x is lesser, smaller than zero, so you will use capacitor. Okay, same goes to the b. So your if your b is larger than zero, you will get use uh, capacitor, and then if your b is smaller than zero, you will use inductor. Okay, so this is the formula. So let's check back here just now. Okay, so our question is like. Our RS here is larger than RL, okay? That's why we will use XL, okay? So, okay, remember, right? RS is larger than RL. So, 
RS larger than RL, so we will use SL. So let's see here. Okay, I summarize this one. So in this condition, oops, okay. So in this condition, you can see that your here is like fifty four, and then your RL is here. So we assume this one is like the RX, okay, and then this one is your uh, XS, okay. So in this case, your RL is your RL is smaller than your RS, so your R is larger than your RL, so you will use SL. Okay, okay. Okay, then we will start use this formula and then to calculate the reactance and the subsystem. Okay, so the X and the B. Okay, so once we once we calculate it, we can use like either plus or minus. For this case, we're using the plus value. So we will get like your, let's say we're using this and then we calculate using the man lab. So we can see from here is like, For this case, it's like okay. We're putting this radio. Okay, so again, so we know that the RS is larger than RL. So our RL is fifty, and then our RS is fifty-four, and then the imaginary part is negative three point one four four. So from here, you can see like we're putting this formula in here. And then we calculate the L and the B and C. How are we going to know how we are using the inductor or the capacitor? So from here, let's say our X is larger than zero. So we use the inductor. From here, if you are if you run it, then we will get the value. The X will be 14 and then the B will be 0 0.064. So both are larger than zero. So we will use the X is greater than zero and then the B is greater than zero. Okay, so once after you calculate, you will get your inductance is this value. So it's uh, similar as in the ADS. So what we get is like 1.96 nan uh, henry, And then the capacitor is S61.17 femtor farad. So when we get the value, right, so we know our lump element value. Okay, so we can go back to here. Plot here. Okay, so you, we know that our capacitor is this value. We put in the capacitor value and the inductor value. Okay, so they actually have another value here. Okay, how are we going to get this another value? Actually, is to change the value x here to become negative. Okay, so if we use negative, we will get this value. Okay, for the component. Okay, let's try it. So this one is the second case. Okay, so it's still the same. The R is greater than RL here. Next, but our x is smaller than 0 and b is smaller than 0. Why? Because uh, we change the formula here to negative, okay, like this one. Okay, we can change this to negative, okay. So if we change it to negative, the value negative, then we will get our x is negative value and our b is negative value. That's why it's lesser than 0. Okay, and the B is lesser than zero, so we will use this formula. That's why our capacitor is is in here, and then our inductor is shunt. Okay. So this uh, once we calculate, and then we get the nine point zero picofarad, and then like T nano Henry. So we also can put this uh, component value in here. Okay, the lambda minimum value. Okay, so it's uh, either either one you will get the impedance matching also for the lump element. So next, I will show you like how to get this value in ADS. Okay, how we get this. So first, you just like uh, turn on your ADS and then you can just like create a new schematic. Okay. So then you will choose like a smith smith chart mesh. Okay. So sometimes if you can't search it, you can just scroll and then scroll down. In the bottom of the passive circuit DG, so you have the smith chart here. So this one is the same. Okay, so you can choose this. Okay, so once we have this, and then we can use the smith chart tools. Okay, once we have smith chart tools, right? So you can choose like. Oops. You can choose like. Here, and then you just put in the value. So just now we know that our RL is fifty. Okay, so we will put 50 here and then our ZS. So our ZS value is okay, 
so here you can make it like smaller okay so here so we know that our zs value is 50.54.145 minus weight 3.144 okay so minus 3.144 and then we just press enter and then we need to choose the frequency so this is 1.2 gig for our question so once you have this okay then you just click on auto two element mesh okay for two element they can do the auto match matching then you will get the value so this value is similar as as the value here okay so you will get for the impedance line element here and then we go back to the chart to the ADS so we just click okay let's say we choose this one Okay, done then we can close this and then we can just like go into push into the hierarchy okay then we have the impedance matching here okay you also can check the result uh, you can put like the 50 ohm port 50 ohm port okay so you can put the 50 ohm port using the template so let's say we have this okay once you have this you can remove this two and then you can connect it directly like here okay and then this okay remember to change the value here okay so our value here just now is 54.154 and then 3.144 okay so 54.54 then minus 3.144 okay we can only use minus here because it's like Okay, let's go back here because it is you can see from here okay it's conjugate okay so here is minus then we need to put uh, positive we need to conjugate and then we need to change the imaginary part to positive okay then only we can get the impedance matching okay so once we're done here and then our frequency here is like 1.2 gig that's why we need to change to 1.2 gigahertz. Okay, so then we will simulate the value. Okay, so we simulate and then check the impedance matching. So if you want to use the template, you can just keep it, or you if you don't want to use the template, you can delete it. And then let's say we run it, then it will put out the graph. Okay, so we have the S1 here, so we can put the marker here. So it should be 1.2 gigahertz impedance matching. So it's yeah. So you will get like uh, 1.2 gigahertz. You will get like mesh here, matching here. So if you want to see like not normalized, you can just change this to 50 ohm. Then you can see it's like 50 ohm megahertz. So you can see like 50 ohm here. Okay. So you mesh your network. Okay. So this is how you get your impedance uh, matching. Then if you continue, we can calculate for this side uh, zs as well so for the zs side uh, it's like 10.13 and then imagery part is 84.770 we can just assume this is like the rl is this one the zs is this okay so how we're going to calculate this is the same method next i will show you how to get the capacitor and data value here for the source here so our zs is like 10.13 so this one is our rx okay and then this one is our rl Okay, so we will define it uh, from the next slide. Okay, so next will be okay. This one is just now what we show. If we key in in the ADS, okay. So how we're going to key in the value, and then we will get the impedance matching the element, the inductance capacitor value for the Z load. Next for the ZS, we we do it the same method. Then we will get the value here. So you can see it. We just put the ZS is. 10.14 so similar as here 10.1 and minus j times weight for 84.70 okay so we just put in in zs okay and then the zl here we assume is this one 50 ohm okay we put it 50 and then you remember to define 1.2 and then you will get the desired network is something like this okay so you can choose either one okay 
So I will prove to you like how we're going to get this value. So you can see from here we have the C1 here and the L2 here. So you can see the capacitor and inductor. So the capacitor is here, inductor is here. You can see like the direction is similar like different way, right? So actually it's the same because our ZS is in this direction. It's this direction to the right. Okay, so if we make it like mirror, right? So we turn like mirror, we to this direction. So the fifth one is in this direction. So actually you can see from here is like the capacitor first and then after that the shunt is the inductor. Okay, so you can see from this direction is like the capacitor and the inductor. Okay, so the capacitor is here, inductor is here. Okay. So actually it's the same. Okay. Then for the calculation it's the same. You just refer to to the RL and the RS. So now currently it's like your RS is smaller than RL. Okay, so your RL is like greater than RS, right? So you will use XS. Okay, for SS here. So you put in this formula, you can use like plus or minus. Then you will get uh, either two. So for this case, it's like when we put in, we're using the SS plus with this square, square root. Okay, and then you will get the S is small smaller than zero and then the b is larger than zero so you will use you will get like two capacitor for this case okay but for our case we want to use like um, inductor and capacitor right so we can choose another one so next we will use the ss uh, in negative value then our rl and rs still the same the rl is larger than the rs is greater than the rs so the rl is greater than the rs from here so you can see like the rs so the rl is here so rl is greater than rs so we are using the negative value here so you can see from here after we calculate it and then we get the negative value is less than the x is less than zero and then the b is less than zero so our reactor will be the capacitor our subsistence will be the inductor so you can see from here actually you also can refer to here like your reactance series and then your subsistence is uh, shunt okay so this one is your 50 ohm your zs so your zs here and then your reactant is here right so your capacitor is here okay and then this one is your so this one is your b your value b here is a so it's an inductor so you can put the inductor here okay so this one is like how you do the calculate the impedance capacitor value and then you also can use the ads just put key in your ZS value and then you can get the network desired network that you want okay for for two element you can use the auto two element for if like three element four element then you need to do it manually by yourself okay you can move move the curve and then add the capacitor inductor in the direction to match your impedance matching so if you want to simulate the amplifier so you can use this design okay and then you can simulate the maximum gain and then the gain power uh, in which gain db and then the source stability and then the load stability circle and then the region of the load stability and the region of the source stability and then this one is the stability of the k and then this form this s parameter is from the question 2.1 okay so we just key in the s parameter value and then we simulate and then after that you can plot the stability load stability and the source stability and the gain power so you can also like check where is the gain region the stability region in the load and then stability region in the source okay and then also the circle of the load and the circle radius of the in the center circle of the load and then the radius of the load and then the center circle of the source and the radius of the source okay so this is all the formula so you just need to keep in mind that in ADS, you need to key in like magnitude, magnitude to as a power tool. Okay, so that's all. Thank you.